I don't know what that noise is. Yeah. Even the microphones doesn't make a difference. It's not the microphone. Yes. <clears throat> so, who's doing the get set lens as well, by the way? A few people. All right. So, I'm gonna. I'll. I'll start solving some of these. <clears throat> I think this is the first one to solve, right? Let's see if I can do this because I haven't done it for so long. So basically, I need to construct a lens. So I'm gonna call the lens constructor. I'm gonna put the uh, setter there. Get her there. Uh, I'm going to check that I'm compiling. I'm not. Why not? Line 211. I've screwed something. Oh, that's because I'm in optic poly lens. Oops. Uh, So what I was saying is, set her there, get her there, and the setter is going to be a function that goes from the pair x and y, the x to be to update in the pair, and return the new pair. Consequently, I don't care about that one. And this one will be get, so get the pair x and y out and return the x. That all compiles, and uh, the test will not yet work because I haven't done modifier, right? So, is everyone happy with that? Does that make sense? So the setter, in this pair, that's the target, that's the field. I'm going to set the x in this pair. So this function is given the pair, the new x value that I'm going to update with, put it in the pair, and leave the other part of the structure alone. And this one is just get it back out. So to get that test going, I'm going to need modify. <clears throat> and this one here is given the lens, the, the modification function, a target value, return the new target value. So this will be lens, the setter, the getter, the modification function, the target. What I want to do is I want to get the value out of the target. I then want to modify it and I then want to set it on the target. I think that's right. No. What did I do wrong? Oh. I need that. Yeah, and also S. Yeah, thanks. Uh. All right, seems to work. I took the pair of zero and ABC and I said, please add one through the lens and I got back the value having added one. I think the other one I'll do is uh, the second, which is very similar. Update the second side of the lens. The uh, setter goes here, pair XY, the new y to be updated, uh, x and then the new y, and I also don't care about that y right there. And this is the getter here, so get the y out of the pair. Don't care about the x, I care about the y. Return the y. And uh, what does this say here? This says, in this structure here, 
modify the second side of the structure, the SND side, by this function. So I should see that modification having occurred, which it did. Yeah. Uh, set L. Oh, yeah. So another thing I'll do is I'll come over to these. I think some, most, of, most of the others are doing uh, the polymorphic update lens in the optic form. Is that right? Is that everyone else? Who's doing that one? Who's doing this, uh, this one here? Okay, a couple of you. So I'll just, um, I guess I'll, uh, have you done the modifier function? Yeah, okay. So I think I explained that earlier. You just use the identity. So, uh, pattern match the lens, call that R, there's the modification function. Um, so, I want to get identity. And I need to do the first and second. Right, so a function from b to b of x. So, so b to b of x, b and x, b to b and x, b to b. That's no, not b. Uh, y. I think that's right. So this should now multiply that 3 by 10. It does. And S and D L.
So is, is anyone doing the store lens? No one. Okay. No worries. Yeah. Doing product with the uh, optics. Yeah. Do you have to use get them and set, or can you use the underlying representation correctly? Uh. I believe so. You should be able to do it using identity and const. I'll have a look at my answers actually. When I, I mean, I last did them years ago. So. Oh, right. But but you're you're essentially. Oh yes. No, you do have to use. Uh, sorry, no, yeah. I, I, I really should tell you a tip there because you'll get stuck otherwise. Um, I mean, I can do it with get and set. That one's easy. But it's, it you'll need... Like, it doesn't seem like it's efficient. So. You'll need this function. Uh, uh, sorry, data type. Sorry. Alongside okay. right and also alongside left. Okay. Um, and uh, the reason you'll need it is because of its functor instance. I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah, it is. It's because of the the, the functor instance. Uh, what is that? I'm glad it's defining functor for you. In which? I mean, that's what no, the pop-up was just a definition of functor from Apple. Oh, was it? Yeah. I don't know what button I did for that. Beautiful. Anyway. I don't know what you did either. <laughs> I've never seen that. Okay. <laughs> okay. We can do category theory too.
you can go from x to y and from y to z. And under comp division, you can go from x to z. You've got a lens of x, y and a lens of y, z. You can go from x to, uh, you've got a lens x, z. That operation alone is called a semi-groupoid. There's usually a, an arrow here as well that just says onto itself, so it has an identity. That that's what makes it a category. <clears throat> so, if we have a lens BC and a lens AC, uh, AB, we can get a lens AC. Lens is a semi-groupoid. Anyone, anyone done that one yet? Crack it out. <clears throat> Sorry? Yeah, so the, the newer lens, yeah. The arguments are around the other way. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and that's just the con consequence of the way lenses are, that, like the, the function itself is written. So if you were to look at like the type of function composition, it's around that way. But the function composition on the lens type of function means that that switches around. Yeah. <clears throat> So, um. all right. So I'm going to write this one. So I got the first setter, the second setter, <coughs> and is that the right button? Yep. I'm going to construct a new lens with a pair of setter and getter. Whoops, just make sure that compiles. We're compiling. Okay. <clears throat> so, so the the type of the thing, and in, and by the way, um, for those of you who are, who are not too familiar with Haskell, this, this is a trick that I do. So I just put an underscore there when I need to know the type of the thing that goes there. So I'm going to say, what is the type of the thing that goes there? Come over here, reload. And it says the type of the thing that goes there is a function from A to C. That's what I need to put there. <clears throat> okay. I need an A there and a C is going to go in this position here. There are two things that I know. One of those is G1 uh, is of type B to C. And I also know that G2 is of type A to B. <clears throat> right, because these are both, this is the, the getter out of this lens. Therefore, I've got a function from B to C, and same here, function from A to B. Given that, where am I going to get the C? And the answer is, I'm going to put this A into G2. After having done that, I've got a B, but if I put that into G1, I will have my C. And I do. And that's actually just function composition. All right, is everyone happy for me to do that? There's actually a website that will do that for you. Uh, for those of you who weren't here yesterday, we, we, I showed you that website yesterday, but I'll show it to you. It's called pointfree.io. And, uh, <clears throat> So basically, if I take that code and I paste it in here, and I hit go, it does that. Oops. So g1 dot g2 uh, compiles. And in this position here, uh, well, I've got my target type. So let, let's figure out the type, right? So well, let's go and ask the type checker for the type. The type is a to c to a. All right, so A to C to A goes here. And I know two things. One is that S1 is of type uh, B to C to B. And I also know that S2 is of type A to B to A. And, uh, I, and I also, I'm going to need, um, I'm going to need G2, which is of type A to B. So basically what I need to do is uh, I'm going to take this A and the C. I'm going to put the A into here. Um, but I need to <clears throat> I need to get the uh, A 
I need to, sorry, I need to get this B out of this target, target value A to put it into here, then send it through S1, get the B out. Anyway, saying code in English sucks. Let's write it. So, uh, A, yeah. Yeah, I could do it like that. So, A to C. <clears throat> um, so, if I call G2 on A, that won't type check because it's a B, and it, uh, yeah, it needs to be an A. If I call S1 on that, uh, on the C, I still have not type checked. But uh, if I then take that B, uh, no, yeah, if I take that B and set that inside the A using S2, I think that might be right. So, uh, this actually gets neater, that's function composition there, right? <clears throat> and uh, one, one thing about categories is uh, certainly the compose function must be an associative function, um, and it is, because it is. Um, so yeah, that's a semi-groupoid instance of a lens. And that's what gives us that composition, right? So in terms of nested structures, we can see here we've got a pair nested inside a pair. And what we want to do is compose these two lenses and do a set with the value 8. So basically, we're going to, we're going to first come down here in, in, in terms of the first side. Uh, and then on the, ah, oh, sorry, yes. Yeah, in terms of, of the second side and then the first side here, set that value to 8. All right, so I think I need to write, have I written set and get? Oh yeah, so. Uh, so this test should pass. It doesn't because uh, why, oh. Does. What is that again?
Let me get my password. And just to give you a bit of a contrast, the uh, solution for composing lenses uh, when they're in this modifier format as a function rather than the pair of getter and setter, the solution's actually really simple. It's actually just function composition. Pretty sure it is. Put in. Uh, ah, what did I call it? L1, L2. Um, because my imagination is terrible when it comes to variable names, and I might be thinking of R at the time, so I just type it. It is honestly not more sophisticated than that. K as well. Yeah, K is cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I remember when we, uh, John and I used to hang out on the internet forums a few years ago, and I used to rant with him about this as well. And he's, you know, there's there's a there's a train of thought that says you need you should name your variables so that I can read them, and I argue that I shouldn't name them at all. Um, you look at the types. Uh, like for example, I mean. I have, I, there's, there's, in this expression here, there is a variable that is of zero length. I have not written its name at all. And I argue that I've made it so readable that I don't have to. Like, for example, so this x here is one character too long. And uh, I, can, I can improve the readability here by making it a zero, it's gone. So that variable is so readable as to not exist. This is my naming strategy. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> uh, so when, when, what do you mean by that? So the, the lens has four type arguments. Yeah. But in terms of, if we have a look at like the definition of a lens, uh, if I import it here, it, uh, it only has, so the constructor only has one argument underneath it, which is a single function, right? So the, the type constructor takes those four arguments. Um, so if we have a look at the kind of lens, we see that it takes four type variable arguments. But the constructor itself only takes one. How's it all going? It's pretty quiet. Everyone going okay? Okay, cool. Are you? Yeah. Oh, on on uh, that's in the optic one. Oh right. Yeah, feel free to uh, communicate among yourselves.
Let's have a look. So I can like prove in Scala mostly before mm -hmm. I used like Scala and some mm -hmm. other things. But when a program has kill shell problem, like I can't make it kind of uh, Oh the white space layer? Mm -hmm. I mean I just probably not no syntax enough, but you see like what I do, like I just try to because I, I didn't get used to this point free style and uh -huh. so or when you're going to have skills, it looks like list always. Okay. <laughs> so, but, uh, like, do you have any advice? How to um, yeah. So, yes, I mean, I, I can solve this exercise, but so th this my is code looks terrible. Probably. Well, it, it doesn't look terrible in that. So, the, the, the key thing about, like, you know, point free style and so on is not, is, is it, eventually it becomes useful because the code is much easier to read. Mm -hmm. Um, but as it is now, like it, it, it's the idea is just spotting patterns. Like for example, in this function here, so in Scala this is not true, but in Haskell it's true where that all functions take one argument mm -hmm. at all times, right? So this set function here is taking one argument, which is the L, which then returns a function to which you would then apply S, which returns a function. Mm -hmm. And if, if you understand that, then you'll understand that by saying lambda x and then you've applied that function to x, you might as well just use only that function, right? So you can just get rid of the x. Yeah, for example. So, like, I, I don't even need to look at anything. I can just say, I can delete those two things. Yeah. Uh, and, and that x there, you'll have to get rid of. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, so, if, if that's more readable to you, I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, but then, like, also probably this can be changed. So I can just yeah. combine this. Well, you, you could turn it, so if you, if you sort of substitute the expressions in, right, so B0 would be F of A0, mm -hmm. and F of A0 would be F of get LS, mm -hmm. then you'll, you'll see that it's a chain of function composition, mm -hmm. right, it's like F of G of H, and yeah, sort of, right. and so you can just put dots in between them, mm -hmm. and so... Uh, no, other tools like H and I thought you can just adjust, probably? Yeah, yeah. Um, I know HLint does it. Um, I, I tend to do it manually though. So like I'll, I'll write the code and I'll go, well... I'll yeah, but I mean, it takes, I mean, you can do it for Scala, for example, to simplify, but now it doesn't yeah. like as much understanding of syntax or possibility. Right. Ah, okay. So yeah, is this Vim? Uh, yeah, it's Vim. So, so there's a few... So, in, so for example, if I said uh, uh, lambda f s like this, right, let's just say... Um, I, I can I can and then delete all that. I can know that that I've not changed anything. Is that a lambda? I think I typed the wrong name. Yeah, well, because it's lambda. Been. Yeah, there we go. So this this is the same function, right? Yeah. So that's pretty obvious. And uh, so then I could do this, and I can go f a zero. All right, because that, that used to be b zero. Yeah. Uh, just inline, basically. Yeah, so I, let, let's just inline it all and just then let's have a look yeah. at it, okay? So get L S uh, S S. Yeah, is that right? Uh, yeah, list the type checks. Does it? Oh, is it happening down here? Yeah. Okay. Oh, what's the next? Oh, it's one more. No, I need a, yeah. Alright, so. Uh, right, so uh, what I'm saying here is um, fmap set ls. So th this expression is, is of this form, right? Uh, it's of this form where I've got f uh, of g of h to s, right? And so, uh, so the other thing to understand is that this is short for that, oops, yeah. uh, that is short for that, mm -hmm. right? So if we look, if we look from here mm -hmm. to here, I, I'm, I will argue to you that you have an expression in that form, all right? So from there to there, 
So we, we can ignore these now, they're not used. From there, so lambda s, that. And that is of that format, right? So f, f equals f map set l s. Uh, g equals f, you just called it f there, and h equals get, get l. <laughs> All right? So do you agree that this, this, uh, this expression here is the same expression that you've got there, except f is that, g is that, and h is that? Yep. And if you do agree with that, then you, th there's, like, there's a pattern here which you see, and it's just that that's the same program. But how do you get f? Because f depends on s. Well, there isn't a, so. So if if you so you know function composition yeah. in Scala, right? Yeah. So it's like function dot compose. Mm -hmm. All right. So it, it, while it, we we have said lambda s, then return this value, which is the same thing as saying just glue these functions together. Mm -hmm. So when we're saying lambda s, we're creating a function, but really all we want is the function that comes back. From that composition, all right? So, so uh, actually, I can write this in Scala, right? So, if I do, uh, what is it in Scala? It's that. This is the same thing as that. There's no x, right? Just put these two functions together. Yeah. So we can, we can. Yeah, that's exactly what we can do. We can. Oh, actually, sorry, that depends on s, doesn't it? So, right, okay, that gets a little bit trickier. That's what you meant, was it? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, okay. Right. So basically... Uh, yeah. Now, there, there, there is a way to do that. Um, I mean, uh, just a question. Is it, yeah. so I like can say, we have, like, very experienced Haskell programmers. Yeah. Can they read point, any point pre style code? Can I read it? I mean, you, you can read Lens because you know Lens, but only very good. I mean, yeah. Type it without any key. Like, you just remember everything in Lens. I mean, there's but certain there's certain things I remember. Like if I see this this pattern here, yeah. I know that it's equivalent to that one. Yeah. Um, that there's really nothing more to think about. Mm -hmm. um, and and this one's just a little bit more work to parse it more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, so there are, there are just certain patterns that you 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 learn about, and I think they come up more in Haskell than in Scala. Like Scala, you, you can't you, of, you often you can't do that. Um, because the type inference it won't work. But so ignoring that, so like you hit this limit in Scala, whereas in Haskell, because you don't have that limit, you develop more of these patterns that you can recognize. So, I mean, there's, there's another, like I can show you another pattern, right? Which is like, you know, this one, um, which is, uh, I see a lot, right? So, I, and that's just like compose, then compose, for example. And I, I don't write code like that, but I know that if I see it, then that's just what, what it means. It's like a, an embedded comp composition. Yeah. So in terms of like the learning process is to recognize the pattern, and it doesn't matter which one you choose, but it's just that you recognize it. Yeah. Yeah. That's really all it is. Yeah, lenses, yeah. Um, this one here, because this depends on S, um, it was actually, yeah, S there, right. Because that depends on S here, um, mm -hmm. I, there's, a, there's a different pattern that I would use mm -hmm. to, to resolve this. I would use an applicative to do that, if I were to point free it. Right, so uh, basically you have a function that's of the form that, right? Um, and this, the, the, this, this expression here mm -hmm. is exactly that. Do you know that one? Yeah. I'm right? Exactly. All right. I'll show you how it's that, right? <laughs> so that's the type. Yeah. All right. But it's also this type. So if I make, so you know the reader, yeah. the, like the function arrow. So. Right, that's the same two two types, and the type of this expression is exactly that. All right, so there's f g. So if you if 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 you can if you can sort of believe that. So does it work for functions in Haskell? Sorry, does does that work for functions? Yes. Yeah, well, it this thing has that type. 
has both of those types. So that's just a specialization of the type. So if I, if I, I can go and ask for the type of this, right? Oh, yeah. But, I mean, this should be a reader, right? Yeah, it's just reader. If I just write a function, it already can understand that it's a reader. Yeah, it'll get, it'll, in Haskell, it'll just infer. Oh. Yeah, if I use it as reader, it'll just turn into reader. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in, in Scala, you usually have to write the type in for it. The type in for it just stops working. But does it work with any data type? So if I use it with lines, it can pretend that it's... Yeah, like so this T can be anything. Yeah, so wh whatever it is in your case, um, whatever S is, yeah, it'll work out. Yeah. So that, that pattern... Now that I see that pattern, I'll just go, well, yeah, I, I could use this if I was to point free it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in fact, you can... You can cool, so the shit, more Haskell. Oh, yeah, ha Haskell's the best. If, if you want to learn how to write Scala, you must learn Haskell. Yeah, I mean, right, like, I, I really believe that. It's very easy to write Haskell after Scala. I mean, just all these concepts. Yeah. Because I use them all in Scala. Yeah. But then you don't have this problem yeah, well, Scala, you kind of hit a limit in in uh, the concepts that you can explore, yeah. right? So you'll just get to this limit and you can't go any further because it's difficult to practice those concepts. Yeah, I used to write some recursion schemes in Scala. Oh yeah, how did, how did that work? Yeah, it would have been on the edge. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, so in terms of like, if you have to write Scala, but you want to develop learning concepts and developing these patterns and recognize them, just go and use Haskell. And yeah, uh, just sit in the corner and write Haskell, then go and write Scala. That's that's what I would recommend. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I um, use other words that doesn't have functor. What doesn't? Uh, so I just I remember lens in Scala is even just look at a functor about the details. Lenses in Scala. Yeah. In the Scala Z yeah. library, yeah. So they're outdated, yeah. right? So that was before the theory. We wrote that years ago, eight years ago, before any of this theory got developed. So yeah. This is this is the latest like theory. Yeah, I so I have not ported that to Scala, mm -hmm. but the um, the Monocle library has. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've sorry. not. Yeah, it's more it's more modern. Yeah. I I think it just it, it explores that concept further. Yeah. Yeah, I used some lens, but mostly it was to abstract on the structure, abstract over the structure, uh -huh. but not for, I like, you know, lens is used for many things like cut classes, uh, yeah. fine lens, and also some, actually, it's covered they used to have proper ADTs, yep. so when they have a, so they don't have a inference problem. So yeah, 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 okay, no worries. So just a bit of diversion if you're interested. Someone was asking me earlier if it's, if it's uh, possible to make these, you know, how do Haskell programmers, I guess, recognize how to make these these kinds of bits of code into point-free form or, you know, neater or something. And uh, I can immediately see a pattern in this solution that allows me to do that. And I'll show you that pattern if you're interested. Um, so basically, um, I, ca I can look at this expression and, and I can notice immediately that it is an expression that is of that form um, that did not change the program. And uh, I can also see that this expression takes on the form uh, given fg and x, f of x of g of x, um, where f is fmap.s, x is a, and g is f dot g. All right, so, so basically what I'm saying is this expression here is of that form where f is that bit there and g is that bit there. And uh, expressions of this form um, uh, it can exploit what's called the uh, S-combinator of the S-combinator calculus, or the applicative reader it's sometimes called. So, have, have most people seen this function before? Um, we often debate its name, spaceship. Yeah, oh well, I, I remember many, many years ago, we called it angle bum. 
Angle so, bomb. Angle bomb. I, don't, I don't know if that name's stuck, but yeah, but somewhere in Australia it's probably still being called that. Uh, but it, it, ha it has this type. That. But uh, we can specialize that by reader where f is uh, t arrow in this case. So this, this is still the same type, specialized. And this, this type here is exactly the type of this expression. All right, so that expression has exactly that type. And therefore, in this expression here, I can, I can uh, exploit um, spaceship. <clears throat> and uh, the way I would do that is instead of writing this code, it would be, uh, well, it would be f, which is that, g, which is that. And uh, I'd probably need parentheses somewhere, actually. So I, I, I do this naively simply by spotting the pattern. I can see the, immediately that this is this expression that I used to have is of this form. And that the answer to the question, you know, how do we do this, is I, I see that pattern. That's how I do it. Uh, probably, well, will it compile? Yes. Lucky. So. <laughs> Pardon? Uh, yeah, well, let's find out because no. I mean, there's another way of finding out. This is the hacky way. <laughs> right, and the, the better way of finding out is doing info dot, but and we see that it... Fixity off by heart, right? Pardon? By knowing the fixity off by heart. Yeah, or, or I, I refuse to do that. So I just do this instead. And we see that um, the fixity of dot is 9, and the fixity of spaceship is 4, so the dot binds tighter, and therefore I don't need those parentheses. Yeah. Most uh, sneaky use of the special operator. Um, okay. <laughs> um, I mean, in terms of the way to think about it, like uh, it, so for some people, obviously, it's not it's not immediately obvious. But if you do this enough times, it becomes obvious that this expression, this, you know, there's this one here that's named the parameter a, and this one here are just the same expression, same program. And I, I honestly have no preference for either. Slightly this one. But if, if I saw you write this, I'm not going to say a word. It's fine. If you were teaching this to novices mm -hmm. and uh, grading them, mm -hmm. and then could we answer with the solution on line one I create, could you automatically see me repeating them? Uh, no, so I, I do do this actually. Um, I teach introductory level. We did it yesterday, right? We almost got up to that level yesterday. And what, what often happens is someone accidentally does this and then stares at it and wonders what they did. Um, and the reason is, is, you know, they followed the types just to get to that answer or something like that and then just stared at it and said, I have no idea what code I just wrote, but I, I did write it. Um, so this happens quite, quite often. I don't assume they're cheating. I assume they're in a deep hole of thought and they popped out the other side and said, what's happened? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure point three will even tell us. Uh, except it'll probably call it, it'll call that function app instead of spaceship. Uh, yeah, and that too, yes. So it, it goes further. There's actually further reasoning to be applied here. Uh, hang on, what is that reasoning? S F dot G. Oops. Oh. Oh yeah, no, no, there's not. Sorry. Yeah. That's not a significant difference.
23, 41. So I, th I think we're going to go to lunch in a couple of minutes, right? Is that right? So I just thought of something, I guess, to show you. Um, so I noticed there were a couple of pilots in my course yesterday, and I know that there's an open source project that works in America called Stratix. And what that does is it reads um, aircraft, uh, aircraft broadcast radio messages called ADSB messages. and uh, but I, I've, I've done the same thing back home. It doesn't quite work as well because it's not America. But um, what happens is uh, when you receive these ADSB signals, um, they contain, uh, I guess, a large record of information about the aircraft, right? So, you know, the latitude, longitude, the, the track, um, its airspeed, and so on. And uh, it occurred to me, I, I use this, and I, I, I talk to my Stratix device using Haskell, it occurred to me that uh, maybe you want to look at this record data type. And uh, so I'll show it to you. Um, I believe it's the traffic data type. Um, so I, I guess what I'm getting at is, is this is kind of uh, you know, real world code. I guess this is the sort of thing I really do write rather than as opposed to um, course material. So he, here we see the record data type. Um, uh, you know, things like, uh, is that right? Yeah, so the latitude, longitude, its altitude, and so on. And the, the lens package, the, like the real, the real package, gives, gives you this little function where if you name your fields with an underscore, it can automatically go and write lenses for all of those fields for you. All right, so if I'm given an ADS-B message and I want to know the latitude, I just use the latitude lens that got automatically created. And I'll show you that. So, you know, like you guys are writing manually, writing uh, lens values right now. I don't actually do that, of course. Um, it's quite a large record. I get all of that information about the aircraft. And that thing there creates a lens for each of those fields, that, that one line of code there. So just to give you an idea of what we really do. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure what you mean by lens function. Oh, yeah, no, it does not do that. And in fact, uh, th there's another way of doing it. This is, this is a little bit of a fancy way of doing it. This one actually makes a type class as well. So we, we have this problem in Haskell where, um, you know, like we have an ADSB message that has a track, a track, like the, the, the field name is T-R-A-C-K, um, but some other data type might have a field called track. So we get this clash of, of field names and this, this classy, this idea of classy means it, it, you can overload that field name so that many things can have a, have a field name called track. So, and it, it does not use that function. No, it uh, generates a lens differently. Yeah. So now I just thought I'd show you that. It just occurred to me. Yeah, and if, you, if, if any of you are pilots in America and you can take advantage of the fact that your Stratix device does work, you can also talk to it in Haskell. So that's, that's open source. So yeah, cool. Let's have some lunch, eh?